You want to tell everybody hello? Say welcome to Appalachia's Homestead, Turkey 2. a lot of questions about things that I post. The other day I posted a video questioning whether or not Miss Blanche was getting a fairy egg, that little weird, funky, highly calcium deposited little egg. Now a fairy egg, guys, typically other people call them other names, but I don't like that, so I call them fairy eggs. It's basically like a misfire egg. A lot of times when you go out to the coop or you go out to the nesting boxes, you find little tiny, like little doopy eggs. And you're like, what in the world? That's usually from a new layer, very common. It can be a stress. It can be just a simple misfire egg, okay? Soft shell eggs can be the same thing too. They can also be a sign of stress. So, Miss Blanche, I am assuming, I'm most assuming, is the one that laid this out in the floor again. So, it's a soft-shelled egg. So, we have a fairy egg, and now we have a soft-shell egg. She's acting fine. She's doing everything just right. We're just going to keep an eye on her, and we'll keep you posted. These oddities happen. So I'm not stressing yet or gonna do anything, but we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on Miss Blanche. I'm trying to get some extra work done before James gets back home from work. I'm not gonna get out the tractor. I'm just gonna move all this stuff by myself. It's good exercise. We need a lot of exercise these days because there's so much work that's gonna be happening in the spring and summer. Hope everybody's keeping very busy. Okay. Hmm. So, I don't like this gap right here. There's not really anything I can do about it. We're on a slope. So, for now, until we can figure it out, I'm just going to put some thingamabobbers here. You know, thingamajiggies. <laughs> Whatever works. Coming to help me? I know. I did it. We got it. Uphill. And that, sisters, is how you can afford to eat biscuits. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That's way too celebratory for me. Let's go. Okay, okay, okay. So you know what I did, right? I, I don't know what possessed me. I don't know. I've been talking about breeding the rabbits and I haven't. And uh, I haven't had baby rabbits. Has it been two years, three years? I don't know. So I just did it. And I sent the picture and meme to James. And so I've given them some time and they're hanging out, having fun. It's obviously, you can see what's going on here on the farm everywhere. So um, I'm going to separate them now and we'll know in about six weeks. And I guess I'm going to be making a lot of brownies. Maybe. I'm not so sure sister was down with it today. So, we're going to keep an eye on this. 
I think he bit her ear a little bit too. Now I know she's had babies and she was a very good mama, but hmm, maybe we like living single. Sleeping single in a double bed. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yes, yes. She had a, she had a little nibble on her ear. And uh, so I sprayed some Viteris since she's separate. They got fresh food and I think we're gonna be all right. I'm not sure she wants him as the boyfriend, but uh, we're gonna find out. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Give it a couple of weeks, see the, watch the behavior. If we weren't good to go this time, it's either not meant to be, or maybe later on in the year. I don't, I don't pressure my animals. <laughs> they have a mind and desire on their own, always. But you should have this in your medicine kit. I have a couple of bottles on, you know, these I keep down at the coop area and up here. It's very important. So honestly, probably one of the best buys you'll ever make. Check it out. So, really, the whole point of this video is to talk about how we homestead, you know, as a married couple. We've been married. We, James and I have been together for almost 25 years. And, um, you know, this is a, an interesting lifestyle to take on. We weren't homesteaders and, and had a farm for a long, long time. And then we felt the call to, to start doing this because we wanted to be more self-sufficient. We wanted to start raising more food, learn about animals mainly to teach our children and to introduce our children to lots and lots of skills. So I always joke about, you know, James wanting brownies and da da da, da. But the reality is, is we really don't do, I don't go and do this crazy stuff and he doesn't know that we're going to be doing it, okay? And just so you know, so you can get a big laugh out of it, you know, I said, what type of brownie do you want? <laughs> when I showed him that I was letting the, you know, the rabbits, the bunnies go on a date. He said, I'd like a Dodge Ram, please. <laughs> Poor boy wants a truck so bad he can't stand it. But people ask me this all the time. And the reality is, is we're in this together. It's that type of relationship. We, you know, there are things that we don't agree on all the time. Um, and, you know, James is very, very, very level-headed. He's very calm and cool and very level-headed. And, uh, you know, we talk about things as far as the finances of it, because obviously when you add babies, uh, you add and expand a farm, you are adding finances, financial situations to the plate. Um, you have to understand and learn how to sell things or trade things or barter things. And so, you know, we've done this for so long, we know what works. We also want to keep a steady chain of, of healthy animals for a food supply, but we also love our animals. We, we, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, do you eat all your animals? No, I, I don't. I really don't. I learn from them because I really feel that if times were ever to get really, really tough, I think that the most um, vital things to have is, are obviously not items that you can sustain on, but it's very critical that you have a lot of good skills and you understand not just how to process food, but you have to understand the life cycle of the animals. You have to understand how to take care of those animals. How, how do those animals breed and procreate? What do you do to help them? Um, I think people with those type of skills, in addition to a lot of other skills, think is highly overlooked in, in, in the large scheme of the population. You and I here, we understand that. We appreciate that. Most of us do. But I think on a large scale, people are so, you know, so disconnected from the food chain. They're so disconnected from animal life. They're so disconnected from being on a farm. Children have no idea. I told you this before. I used to teach 4-H classes and I taught a chicken class. This has been probably 12 years ago. And I'll never forget it. I will never forget. I took some hens to a 4-H, you know, thing and uh, at, at the Tennessee Valley Fair and was teaching children. Children showed up and it was great. And I, a lot of them had never touched a chicken. They'd never seen a chicken. And one little boy asked me if roosters laid eggs. And when I experienced that, because we're all in our own little worlds, we have our own children, we do our own thing, and a lot of us are trying to be more self-sufficient and teach our kids. You see what I'm trying to do with my boys as much as I can, as much as I can. But there's, folks, that's not what most people are doing anymore. So it's up to us. So the more that we can learn, the more that we can grow, the more that we can share, 
and laugh at the end joke about it at the same time because there's a lot of stress with this lifestyle. A lot of work and a lot of stress. Um, folks, I'm just saying, if you're watching this video and you're a homesteader or you feel the call too, you've been chosen. God is convicting you for a reason. Listen to the call. All right, guys. Thank you, Cora. Oh, my goodness. You hear all that? It never ends. Working hard. Stay busy. Stay in love. See you on the next video.